Okay, so we're back again for another episode of the Goose Podcast, and this time we have one of our favorite guests back with us again. It's Vinny Fanarin, the tech and games reviewer for the Irish Sun. So if you're ever checking out proper full on game reviews that aren't ourselves, check him out every Saturday and Sunday in the Irish Sun. In this episode, we're talking about the latest games that are, that are hitting the market. We're looking at Ghost Recon Breakpoint, we're looking at Modern Warfare 3. We're looking at FIFA versus Pez. And basically, it's an hour of the lads talking games. So if you're in the market for anything, this is the one for you. But before we get into that, quick word from our sponsors. iMua.ie is a directory website for the Irish beauty industry. iMua helps you find a new and reliable beauty professional service or freelancer based on their location, their price, their services provided or passwork. They're essentially the just eat of the makeup world. Right now, you can become an IMUA sp- sponsored professional or freelancer, and they're going to give you their the goose package as such. Go onto our website, find out more about it, and if you know anybody who's in the makeup or beauty industry, tell them, check this out. It's going to be the just eat of the beauty industry. So, right, time to talk about games. Let's go. Hi, Vinny. Welcome back. How's things? Really well. I've been up to my ears in games. Some of them good, some of them excellent, and some of them not so good. If you want to launch straight into this, by the way, might I suggest we talk about Ghost Recon Breakpoint, because it's out, like, more or less at midnight for early access people. And it's out on the 4th of October for everyone else. I've been playing it since this afternoon, and it's really good. There's no one bongo on reviews, views, and all that crack, so have at talking about it but from my end i'm fucking loving it so far bleep that out absolutely not <laughs> <laughs> I, I was i was actually playing the beta version last week i'm waiting for the download code tonight as well um just, i think it's going to be a cracking game well if i might go into the, the the bare bones of why i like it i really liked wildlands um and this is like a way better version of Wildlands. This is apparently not going to get as boring as Wildlands did about halfway through the game. And it's based on the exploration modes that we've already seen in Assassin's Creed and to a lesser extent in The Division. And I think they've refined their open world RPG style game. And I think it's it's really compelling. I haven't like I basically just hopped straight off it to come here because I wanted to squeeze every last second out of it before I started talking about you. Now I did play the drone um the beta as well, and I did really enjoy it. But what what exactly did you like about the beta? Tell me. Uh, I think like the op- the open world, as you said, is was really cool. Um, you know when you go into the camp and you can see all the live players in there, and you know make your cr- your crew, and off you go. And I know we're going to talk about Call of Duty later, but I'm not the biggest fan of that. It feels very much you know drop onto the map and just shoot the shit out of stuff. Whereas this, it's a lot more tactical, and you have to actually work with your teammates to do missions rather than just you know shoot everything around you yeah you prefer kind of a it's a bit more solo in call of duty modern warfare we'll definitely get onto that now in a bit but um i do like a bit of call of duty modern warfare to be honest with you the modern warfare kind of sub-series is my favorite of all the cods um but back to ghost recon again um yeah i I really do like the co-op part but it takes about an hour and a half for the co-op part to start if you're not careful and you don't go off to do the missions properly at the beginning and I actually really like just shooting on its own it's a good it's a good looter shooter I felt it was very satisfying to just pick up guns off dead people which is which is always good it is well luckily guys we're I think we're in a fairly good com- position for the uh, listeners because I haven't played Ghost Recon um, so do one of you want to kind of explain what the storyline is and exactly like will there be many how open world are we talking here are we talking like uh red dead redemption open world or is there still going to be a lot of kind of objectives like you would have at a standard war game or shooter game have you played assassin's creed uh well i've played the first two oh, or no. did they change much over time Benny, do you want to take this one well if, if you play if you played the most recent two assassin's creed they've kind of definitely um 
base the narrative and the mission structure on that insofar as you're given a huge map and each area you can kind of pick apart little pieces by like you know destroying someone's resources destroying a camp you know killing a boss um killing a, a boss who you know exposing a boss and then killing a boss that kind of small mysteries and uh breadcrumb trail style quests all across the regions and it kind of adds up to you unlocking different parts of the mission as you go on so it's very like the last two assassin's creed in that sense um a lot of people might think that that narrative kind of it, it's lazy insofar as it just gives you a lot of small missions that don't really have much to do with the end goal but kind of they add up to something if you know what i mean um so if you did like the last two assassin's creed definitely it also feels a bit like far cry because you're off in a kind of a rugged area with some modern technology or in this case four years from now technology because it's set in 2023 of course um it's kind of um rugged but at the same time very technically accessible with you know, helicopters and easy movement and mobility and all that type of stuff so uh it does kind of stand out as yet another ubisoft open world game but because i suppose it's so serious in its shooterdom and it's uh future te- futurist technology it's a lot of drones I mean, it is it is very much a private military contractor that has futurist technology rules the island, so it is going to be very futuristicy. Um, and, and again, yeah, you're kind of there's a lot of small submissions you can do and discover around the place, and it's not necessarily directing you anywhere. It's supposed to be truly open world, you know. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. So, like, so Dean, it's basically the way it's set is that this group called the Wolves they've taken over an island. And it's run by a company called Skell, and they base it, as Vinny said, they're a private military contractor. And your unit is basically trying to take the island back. But the head of the ghosts is the Punisher, John Berthal. Is, yeah. his, ca- his character is, is fairly integral to the early game, what I've played so far. You kind of, you come in, he's part of your group, a ship gets sank, you have to investigate the sinking, you get sent in. He reveals that he's a turncoat the, the terrible bastard and <laughs> then it, it starts a slight revenge side plot so again there are different subplots along with the main mission of finding out what the hell is going on in the island who sank the ship and what the wolves are up to and then finally eradicating them so yeah there's a lot of little plots in along the way that get to your end goal of you know killing everyone it's and, a post recon uh, game how many how many hours have you put into it Vinny, so far and how like I don't know if you'll really be able to gauge, but how many hours do you think it will get, take to complete a campaign? Because I remember with the Call of Duty games, if you were sitting there for seven, eight hours a day, if you were good enough, you could probably have the game completed in four or five days. Uh, is this a lot more complex than your standard storyline game? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it, it will be a lot longer than seven or eight hours. I've only about two hours in, two and a half hours in so far, and I'm always really a sucker for an open world and i traveled a huge part of the map and just avoided doing any of the initial missions so uh it took me a lot longer than it should have but i've seen a lot of the map and it's going to take a long time i mean the last wildlands if you ran through it and did only exactly what you thought would get you to the next stage to get to the next boss to kill the next lad to get to the very top that was 12 16 hours at the very least so this is going to be i'd say that now there's a chance they might have taken away some of the bloat and made it so that the game's a bit more streamlined and it doesn't run out of steam halfway through, like the last Wildlands, because a lot of people did complain about Wildlands running out of steam halfway through and becoming a bit boring, a bit repetitive. So if they did fix that, I can see it being slightly shorter if you took the shortest possible route, but also because the map is vast. It's a very large map. I have no exactly how many square kilometres it is, but it, it is, it's probably comparable to Wildlands. Um, it's definitely dense. I mean, there are parts of the map where you can't really travel uphill. You have to follow, like, pleasure lines sorry pleasure paths or like um or you know very thin dirt tracks as they snake up the hills and you can't just go like a beat make a beeline for it you have to just you have to just kind of take whichever route you're made so in, in a way it's kind of it really feels bigger than it is right now but um yeah it does feel substantial and like it will take a long time to clear off absolutely everything if you had an inkling to you know yeah yeah i'm actually looking here just uh, as you're talking about map size it doesn't give like a square kilometer size but from end to end, you're talking an hour, 49 minutes and 58 seconds. To just run from one side to the other. Yeah. yeah. So that is massive. That's impressive. And you consider the fact that in games, um, there's kind of a, a time and distance compression. You, you probably run five, six times the maximum speed of a human being. 
and you can run it for like you know five ten minutes at a time instead of like 10 seconds like sprinters do um and obviously the helicopters in the game they just they accelerate really quickly they stop on a dime it's not about accurate um vehicle handling it's more about your ambulation and how you can get around the place so that hour and 50 minutes is probably i'd say could be 10 kilometers by 10 kilometers really you know could, yeah, could be yeah. more than that but it, and, it seems uh, huge so and um probably every gamer's worst nightmare nowadays is there many kind of loot boxes or uh Monitor many in-game purchases all that kind of jazz yeah kind of like you know would you be able to enjoy the game without because like my own girlfriend now like and her friend have started playing sims recently they got it for like 50 quid they spent about 120 that went order two completely different games but they spent like 120 quid in in-game purchases in three weeks so is how it much ca- why for a start why are they spending so much money on sims but man they will <laughs> honestly spend eight or nine hours in front of the tv like playing that thing they are obsessed i don't yeah. see it at all I, I i can totally see that i mean i don't think there are much in the way of microtransactions in this game that'd be worth talking about unless you're really lazy i mean ubisoft has yeah, done this awful. thing called a time saver in the last two assassins creed which you could argue were a little bit greedy because the game could be grindy at times. But I just don't think you're going to need it in this game. Unless you want to buy certain weapons that are very desirable. Or you want to buy, you know, skins for your dude. Or, you know, mm-hmm. a different weapon gun for your one or whatever. I don't know. It's just, it doesn't seem like it's an essential. So far, I haven't even noticed any microtransactions or loot boxes so far. There is a store, but I think it's just for buying XP boosts. And again, if you're willing to play the game that you've paid for, <laughs> then I mean... I don't see the harm in selling a shortcut when the game isn't as grindy. I mean, Assassin's Creed, you could definitely say the last two were so grindy and it took so long to go up a certain amount of levels, to take on certain bosses, that it it did kind of funnel you into the time-saving aspect. But I haven't haven't really witnessed that so far yet. I don't think it's going to be like that. I, don't, I, I would say, pushed for a yes or no, I would say no. Loot boxes are not a significant factor in this game. No, but I can see what you're saying with the time-saver and like that's one we'll only figure out in the next couple of days because as you said the early access comes out tonight so you know it might be a case of like wild lens you get about halfway through and you're like and you're struggling to get those xp points to play the boss because i I did find that problem in in, uh, the last assassin's creed myself definitely um assassin's creed odyssey was the last one based in greece and before that was origins was the one based in rome um the kind of the greek tragedy odyssey i think um suffered a bit more from it um, because the map was so big and you could go into you could go from a, a an area of the map that was a level 12 appropriate area to one that was like level 48 in the next territory and if you accidentally wander in and you see some mad joke with 37 above his head you're just dead and i really didn't like that aspect of the game because level 37 feels an awful long time an awful long way away when you've ground your way through eight or nine hours to level 12 i mean are they really expecting people to put in 70 80 hours to finish off all the sub bosses because I don't know. I think it's asking a lot. Yeah, no, I I get what you're saying. Like, if you do some of the off like those, it's a lot easier for people. It's very easy for some people to get frustrated. And no, you want to enjoy a game. Obviously, with, with probably every game that's been ever made, a level of frustration comes with it. But you don't want to be getting completely lost. But sure, I'd say for experienced gamers, it would be easy enough to find a way back to a level where you're, um, that you're playing at, that you can handle without throwing the controller off the TV. <laughs> this definitely doesn't have um as much frustration inherent to the gameplay. I think um, this isn't walled off as much. I think you can wander off the beaten path and beat, and beat people who are too overpowered. I think it's quite the same uh, thing as Assassin's Creed. And that's why I don't think it's as grindy, really. That's why I think it's not as um, prone to being milked with time savers and that kind of thing, you know? Yeah, like I was I was playing the beta and I was just playing it on the standard game mode and I kind of flew, flew through it. I was sitting there kind of going, I can't wait for this full game to come out so I can actually sink my teeth into it. I only put about an hour and a half in and I was like, done. Do you know? And it's a, it, what, it is a game that you're going to want to play. Like, that was my main complaint. It felt a bit... It felt a little bit easy. Just, you know, the missions were very much, you know, get here, do that, and you get... But that, I was probably playing... That's probably my fault, so I don't really mind. But as Vinny said, the train is what the... The big challenge you have to kind of go down the pathways there's no just hiding running around the back of trees to run around the back of the army if you're going up the path you're going up the path i i do think 
that the map is well designed in that way. Like John was just saying there, is that if, if the game wants you to have a firefight, it's not letting you get away. You kind of, you have to engage. But at the same time, it feels organic. It's not like when you're playing an open world game, you shouldn't get whisked away to an area you can't leave. This kind of just has an environment whereby it happens naturally. And so far, I've had so many firefights where I felt I can't go anywhere. If I move, if I move, I'm dead. And it wasn't like I was penned in in an artificial fashion, like with an invisible wall. Another thing I'd like to point out back to the time saver is, is that um, this game has so much more to offer uh, mechanically than Wildlands, that it does represent good value. And also, if you're clever with stuff, I mean, I'm sure you could save your own time just with a bit of imagination. And I do also like that because it does allow a lot of cleverness and to get around those problems. Like, there are high-level enemies you can meet, but they're no, they're no higher than you can handle if you use your imagination. And that, that deserves credit. So... You would recommend it anyway, Vinny, in your opinion. So far, I mean, I, I, I yeah. definitely say the early early review would be definitely positive. I mean, I enjoyed Wildlands to a point. I think I gave it an 8 um, in the Irish Sun when I reviewed it. 8 out of 10 or 4 out of 5. I don't remember what, exactly what scale we were using at the time because we changed it a while ago. Um, but yeah, the complaint was that in the middle of the game, it got it got a little bit boring. This game seemed to offer an awful lot more an awful lot more way of approaching things and therefore, I suppose, a bit more variety. Again, just so far. But yeah, thumbs up so far. Awesome. Agreed. Um, yeah. It is going to be very much a case of does it burn out, but early early review. Uh, I, I'd, be, I'd be sold. I think it would be worth the money. There is one more thing I've got to mention is there's an exploration mode that's new to the game, but not new to Ubisoft games, obviously. They've had them in the last Assassin's Creed. And what that is, is that removes markers from the game so that you have to find your way to a certain region on the map. It'll say it's west of something. It's next to this river. And it's underneath a mountain, and the mountain might have a name, might mountain might not have a name. And basically, if you look at your map, be clever, get to the area, use environmental cues, you find your way to your marker. And that's that's fantastic. It's greatly immersive, number one, but number two, it really makes you appreciate how much work has gone into the world. Um, it's, it's a really good looking world. It's not the best looking world because it's so big, they can't put that much detail in. But what areas are very detailed? Very worth going to. And yeah, the map in exploration mode, you definitely have to play the game in exploration mode. It's the only way to do it. And just before we move on from it and move on to Call of Duty, Vidi, first of all, is there a multiplayer mode? And second of all, if you if there is, have you played it or what do you think of it? 100%. Um, I haven't given it a go yet. There was a multiplayer beta not so long ago that I could not participate in because I was too busy. Um, the PvP combat system, I think, comes online tonight at midnight. Um, at the minute, there isn't enough people to populate it, so they've turned it off. Um, they've disabled it at the moment. Um, they might enable it slightly closer to 12 but as yet i haven't had a chance to sample it i assume it'll be the same 4v4 over a very significantly large area of the map will direct you into an area where you have to catch an objective before the other team does and once the object does collect that you have to kill them before they extract that was most of the missions in wildlands the previous ghost recon game it's a lot of fun because the because the gunplay is so good because the a good weight and a heft to all the weapons it's definitely worth playing um whether or not it's worth buying the game for well i don't know i mean wildlands didn't exactly launch with its multiplayer it came in later on so they were they were cocksure that their single player had to be on point because they put the multiplayer in to this largely single player and co-op you know campaign game yep. um, i'm not sure how much effort they would put into it really um i'm not sure how much time and resources they divert to, to something that's it's basically an afterthought you know yeah like the co-op will be fun but single player it is a single you know it's the, like the, a red dead or something like that or gta you're better off just sitting down and doing it a, a little bit yeah because if you don't have all four people playing with you all the way you're going to miss some of the story or someone's going to miss some of the story along the way so i mean it is definitely fun to bring people in for missions instead of just using the bots the ai or your drones definitely fun for a bit but i think playing the vast majority of it on your own it's probably the most desirable way to play it, even though it's supposed to be designed as a tactical shooter. And can you be tactical on your own, really, other than telling what an AI to shoot when you tell it to shoot? Probably, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, um, well. we'll find out in the next couple of days. Exactly, we'll find so, out in the next next couple of hours, really, John. I'm looking. I'm I'm staying up not all night, but I'm gonna stay up till three or four. Did anyway, you get your download? Crack. Have you got your access already? Yeah, yeah. Um, Ubisoft PR sent it to me just this afternoon. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm I'm waiting. She said she'd get it to me either tonight or tomorrow. Uh, Sosbra. I know. I'll, I'll be online once you get on. Once I get in. I'll definitely see you there. Um, I think we're going to move on to the next game. That was uh, the Call of Duty, the 
what would you say the That's what you want to talk to you revitalization of the modern warfare series arguably probably one of the most anticipated call of duties in well since the last modern years. warfare yeah i was thinking <laughs> modern that, warfare maybe three. One, modern warfare 2 because based off of like the success of one like you know um but yeah have you gotten your have you sunk your teeth into that one yet um i haven't um, unfortunately, the the full game isn't out until the end of October. I've played a bit of the multiplayer beta, and it is very much, I don't mean this in a bad way at all, it's very much the same as you would expect from a Call of Duty Modern Warfare game. It's ridiculously slick, mostly cla- claustrophobic maps, incredible detail, lots of alternate lines of sight. The maps that, that were available in the beta were, were really good. They were perfect COD maps, you know, like I said. Loads of alleys around which to flank. There's nowhere where you feel safe. There's a few camping spots, but you're always at risk in those camping spots. Um, A few things I don't like. um, It's the cascading effect. Is when you do well at the game, the game seems to open up for you. Like, you know, your prestige system, the better you are at the game, the more stuff you have, the longer you've played it, the more you're going to win. And you just have to plug away until you get to that point where you can get, you know, reliable streaks and reliable... um, reliable uh, high numbers to prestige eventually so um it's very much just the same kind of game and that's what people want um they i feel they like don't... my problem with call of duty the last couple of years has been as you said with the prestige system i'm the kind of guy who likes to do the story mode first and the story mode on call of duty is only about six seven hours long but that is long enough for people who are into call of duty to get way ahead in with their prestige by the time you get into the servers you're just being shot left right and center and eventually Unless you're a real codhead, you you sit there and just go, no, I'm out. And that's what happens to me every year because I enjoy Call of Duty for like two weeks and then I realise I'm so far away from everybody else and I can't enjoy it. Yeah, there's certainly, um, there's a sweet spot where you want to reward people for being good at the game, being dedicated to the game, spending time, you know, learning all the mechanics, learning the maps and stuff. But you also want to make it friendly for new people to come in. I mean, the game kind of sells itself as an intense but still casual shooter and i think because the streak system has gotten so powerful over the years and because the perks for prestiging have gotten so great over well they've wavered but they trended upwards shall we say since the olden mm. days of 10 years ago um yeah it is it is getting unfriendly to noobs or the more casual of casual players the kind of person who'll play four to six hours a week for a few weeks after release of the game versus every single hour of the day that they have for the first week Call of Duty World War II, because there was a limit to the technology, there was a little bit of a dial back on the streak power. Something like a V2 was an amazing item to get, and you had to be well decent to get that kind of thing in a streak. Yeah. But it, it was it was counterable. Just run away. Whereas some, some of the stuff in the Modern Warfare beta is just... There is no counter. You just die. They're free kills. I mean, people call them the free kill streaks for a reason, because it's just... Here, you have 12 kills in a row already. Have another seven. Because everyone wants to see some lad with 51 kills and two deaths at the top of the leaderboard when everyone else is struggling to break even. Mm. That's probably sarcasm. I'm sorry about that. I don't know if it belongs in this podcast. Um, no, I'm, I'm I'm that guy sitting there going, you absolute langer. Because it might be something like, I don't know, like the airstrikes from a couple of years back. And it, you're just like, Why? Well, my friend Adam, his his first point was that your very first um, streak is is the radar. So the very first time you hit three kills before anyone else does, you have an immediate ability to get to seven kills pretty easily. And then by the time you're on seven, you're at free kill territory along with the radar. You know, so it's 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 crazy stuff. The cascading effect kind of needs to be toned down. Although that's maybe what people liked about it. I don't know. Yeah, no, I'm definitely on the same uh, level as John there, who. When it came to the uh, Call of Duty games, I very much enjoyed the uh, um, the story, the storylines. But when Call of Duty was kind of like peaking a few, what, probably ten years ago now with Modern Warfare, when everyone started playing online, unfortunately my broadband didn't. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, you were living out in the sticks where you got like yeah. point three of a make. So while all my friends were online playing Call of Duty, I'd be at home just playing the story by myself or playing Halo Aww. because I couldn't go online with them. Um, so I'm definitely in the same territory as John there in terms of like I'll land onto a map, and I will have two kills and twenty four deaths. If I might bring back to the single player campaign of this game, is the details are kind of scant so far we don't know exactly what we're what we're going to get 
how it's going to handle. But they did say it's it's going to be emotional, quote unquote. And I think that just means something controversial, as in they're going to have someone shooting up, I don't know, a shopping centre or a school or something horrible. Because, you know, where are they going to go? Do you remember the No Russians mission in one of the older uh, Modern Warfare? Modern Warfare 2, I think it was. You were in an airport and you were just wiping out people. And that was obviously very visceral. Um, It's going to have quite an emotional impact on people who aren't sociopaths. And I think they're going to have to outdo themselves this time because they have promised something that's going to be truly heartbreaking and i think modern warfare one had its moments but they were pushed to do something spectacular because they did push the envelope just a little bit in modern warfare 2 sorry modern warfare 1 and then they had to absolutely blow that envelope away in modern warfare 2 and then we ended up with the no russians mission so maybe we're gonna get something controversial i don't know that will be a very bold call a very bold call if they were to go like make it try make it bigger than an airport you know what do you reckon? It was man. It was the sheer. I remember that mission. You were just running through the airport, milling people. It, it's basically like GTA and God meet for like one mission. No, this was a different level because like you were genuinely like yeah, you were GTA just running over take corpses as seriously. Whereas yeah, COD kind of tried to really rub it in your face. You know, mm. you were just running over corpses to get to more corpses. Uh, it was just fields of them, and like. It's a great mission, It's inten- but it's intense. You're sitting there after it going, oh, Jesus, do you know what? I might say, uh, th- Joe, Joe, when you need to get up and go for like a fag break. Yeah. That's exactly the moment you finish that mission. You're like, right, I'm... Just hold your head in your hands and off, what have I become? Off for a cry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where did what just happened? I'm out. Um, so I think as well that I see that... Um, in this modern warfare, we might be getting a battle royale mode as well. Uh, gunfight mode. So kind of, yeah. Well, what do you make of that? Would you be into your uh, battle royals, um, Vinny? Not at all. Not like no. at all. Being like, I mean, the very first time I played Fortnite, I came across a high level, not sure what color that is anymore. It's a long time ago, shotgun, and wasted almost everyone until I came sixth. And I was like, this does not bode well. I had never played the game before, and I came sixth. And, yeah, I went back and played a few more times. Didn't quite come sixth again. Eventually won one. And I was like, this, while there is some skill involved, is just a bit too random for me. It's it's mm. the coloured weaponry, really. Wildness. I could definitely get into, you know, um, player on Battleground a bit more. But, again, I was kind of bored. It was the same thing over and over again in the same map. And I couldn't get into it. But I suppose the Battle Royale mode in the last Call of Duty game was actually one of the best bits. Um... Call of Duty Black Ops 4 had, what was it called? Either way, the extraction mode, I can't remember what it was called. Either way, there was a kind of a battle royale mode in that, and that was actually quite good. I did enjoy that. Um, the last EA um, battle royale game, the free one, Apex. Apex, yeah. Did play that for a bit, did enjoy the kind of different mechanics it had to offer and how it you know, evolved the old genre on. But again not a battle royale guy and it's probably the one mode i'll play a few times just for the review for the sake of seeing what it's like and then never play it again yeah mm. i think there's do you know what there's, there's a, it's, i think it's one of those game modes because it's quick and it's fast people enjoy it but i i'd be in the same boat do you know if i'm playing a game i want to get into it and it, it's the same with the online mode you know when you're playing something like like call of duty or like FIFA or PES even you know, like you're leveling up you're progressively playing against better people but with, with the Battle Royales you're you know, once you figure out how to win you always win yeah I think as well that probably Battle Royales would be more for gamers like myself who don't get the game that much and are just looking to sit down for an hour and just kill some time Um, whereas like there's other gamers who would be like so like play three four hours a night on the weekends if they've nothing to do this in front of tv all day and they like more structured games such as cod or like ghost rico we were just talking yeah. about or even like some red dead redemption like i don't uh, as fascinated i was with red dead uh but it's sheer size of the map and the complexity of it i don't think i would have the patience to be able to sit down and play it oh, but there are games i know i know How, did, I you, wish if I you, was. did you enjoy D- gta well, yeah, GTA. It's, the old GTA is like... It's GTA like and general. horses. Cop and yourself. 
Yeah, well, no, to be fair, no, I haven't given it a shot. The last open world game I uh, tried to play was, I think it was Skyrim, and I just kept dying over and over again, like an hour into it, and I was like, oh, fuck this. Okay, Whereas, we, like, I know it, I know it, Battle Royale games are not no, very good at that, like, and I die over no, and over not, again, but it's still kind of different every time, even though it's... Do we have to put you on a fortnight well. time out and, like, give you a proper game to play for a couple of weeks? <laughs> Exactly. God, I'd actually love it. I actually would <laughs> if you really enjoy that, but I just, I don't yeah. try to sit down. That, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to put you. We're going to put you on a fortnight timeout. We're going to give you a proper game to play for two weeks. I'd actually love to play the new Modern Warfare. I'd love to try out the storyline and that now and give it a good whack. I haven't. Um, okay. I haven't uh, played a storyline Modern Warfare since probably World War Two. Was that? Yeah, that's correct, isn't it? Yeah, so um, yeah, no, I'd definitely love to give it a shot. Yeah, I mean, it's... I think I think I like to know having a storyline and having objectives. So if it's just open world and I have to make my own way around and figure out what's going on, I just I'm like, come on, I want a group of guys to come so I can shoot them. You know, like... <laughs> <laughs> Has to be done. Like, everyone just gets the urge, gets the itch. Yeah. Um, it's out in 25 days from now, 25th of October. So, I mean, you 20... have a bit of time to at least yep. read about it and get more excited for it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, no more Fortnite. The, the next thing we're going to talk about was FIFA. Now, the thing is, FIFA is only officially out for, what, three days, four days by now? Something, uh, like, something like that. And, uh, yeah, it's not gotten good reviews from the public. Mm. Metacritic has it down at 1.3 from users. And uh, it's a little bit higher from reviewers. Um, about eight, I think, is the meta score from reviewers. Um, have has anyone played FIFA Twenty yet? I have played FIFA Twenty. Obviously, I'm about to talk I about have. it at length when someone else gives their opinion first. But I'll allow you to go I first, John. A Continue. Big rant. FIFA fan. Oh, you you want the rant? Because yeah, do you know what? Strap I bu- I bought it up. when it came out, right? And I'm already tempted to go back and trade it in for fe- for Pez. I feel like I've just wasted my money on the exact same game as last year where they've actually reduced the... Like, Pez has always been known for having like better gameplay anyway, and it feels like FIFA were getting there, and then this year they've just gone, fuck that. It's like... It, it's become this revenue-generating monster. It's all about... It, you're going to yeah. pay 70 euro for the game, you're going to pay 90 euro for the extended edition people are playing ultimate team and they're buying packs on the daily the thing is going to is one of the f- like first games to have profit on the daily like mad profits if i might jump here and say that i actually am not a fifa fan i'm a pro ev fan but i do like fifa like i i play fifa after a few months when i'm bored of pro ev long after i've used it i'll whip that bad boy out and put it on for a bit and i might play online like Pro clubs is genuinely a compelling mode. Building a team yes, with your friends and building your own player with your friends and playing online is fantastic. Empirically, FIFA has certain modes that probably just can't match, and I prefer them. But, exactly like you said, hitting the nail on the head, the early version of FIFA 20, like almost every single early version of every FIFA ever made, was superb. It was revelation. It was loose. It had that kind of... I hate saying this word because it gets overused. It had a skill gap and a skill gar- barrier whereby you couldn't just ping the ball around a, around the pitch like table tennis. You had to work the ball. You had to be facing your guy. You had to, you know, think about the pass, think about your shot, think about your dribble. And they always dial back on that. They always release a full game and it's more or less the same as last year. Now, I mean, if you want to go through all the bile and the filth on Metacritic yourself and read it, everyone says the same thing. It's all about how they just don't, change the game and they they feel they almost feel the loss of the the beta or the the preview version all the worse when they release a game like it is um the biggest problem people have obviously is the fact that they'll keep changing the penalties and changing the free kicks year on year and that's the only thing that will actually change um again they're going to sell 25 100 times the amount that pro ev does but pro ev this year they put a they put a lot of effort into making a new game in the pitch it feels a lot oh, different. the ball physics are incredible. The ball physics are incredible. I mean, going back, back to playing FIFA 20 after two weeks with ProEv was... It was tough. I was playing against my sister's boyfriend at the weekend, and every goal we scored, more or less, was a cracker. And I've scored about two goals that were of any any repute. Two goals that weren't an embarrassment to me in ProEv in that time, because you have to work so hard. And the ball is just... It's a free entity. And the ball physics means the ball will go in off anyone. It'll scuff off the bottom of a shoe and roll past the goalkeeper in a very realistic sense it makes it very satisfying fifa doesn't have that it, every goal is a smasher 
every goal is top corner off the crossbar. Sometimes a 14-year-old child will be brought on as a sub because there's not enough players and he'll score the winning goal two weeks yeah. into injury time. It's just that kind of stuff. It eventually gets to people. When you're playing online, then it's so much worse. I've only played the limited amount of foot so far and there is so much scripting whereby your players just turn to poop. You're like, are they tired? No, no, no. Their players are much more tired than mine, but yet they have more speed and more reaction. Oh, they've scored. I didn't see that coming. But that's, yeah, that's what's gone yeah. down to now, unfortunately. And these players have become... It, it, you know what? It's become this... It's not about the game anymore. It's about, like, you know, the, the players getting their player cards. It's about building the team on Ultimate Team where it doesn't matter what those are because you're building the squad yourself. But, like, when you want to play career mode, like the career mode this year, Vinny, I don't know if you've seen anything about it, but it is absolutely appalling. It's the exact same game mode, right? Nothing's changed. But what ha- what what the biggest glitch I've seen the first couple of days is that I I picked, I just picked for argument's sake, Man United in my first game in the season. I played Chelsea, and they had like a sixteen year old of goals. It was just randomly generating like the reserve squad and shit to play against. And this is a common theme that I've been seeing online, like people in the first season having Man United and Spurs relegated. You know, oh. <laughs> like they didn't bother. Crazy. Yeah, it just feels like it's so close, but just not finished. But this seems to be over the past probably three years now. This seems to be like a common theme with FIFA. Like they sp- users, players seem to be getting a lot less satisfied with it. I think probably FIFA 16 was the last one where people were like, it, it was, but they haven't changed the game dynamic since. Yeah, like and the, like the floor, like for, they found. Like I, I feel they found then they thought that the gameplay system they had then they were like, yeah, nailed it, hmm. and they've been tweaking the free kicks and cor- like the set pieces dynamic since, and, and left the open gameplay alone. When that's exactly it. There's lots of um, what you say frills and skirts thrown in on top of the actual game, but the actual gameplay itself remains fundamentally the same. Back to the modes. I mean, they did make a huge deal about bringing in cutscenes from journey style cutscenes from the journey of the last three years of the game into the career mode and I don't think that's panned out too well a bit like the Provolution so, Soccer doesn't so. it? yeah it doesn't it doesn't have the same it doesn't have the impact on the game necessary to kind of make up for the fact that it slows the game down they look boring they're visually repetitive and obviously slowing the game down is the biggest deal for most yeah you finish a game you have to you have to go to your post-match press conference and it's three shitty questions that you have to listen to the whole thing and then you get three shitty options and they pretty much all just affect your team's morale either up or down that's it that's it it doesn't feel immersive like I mean it's such a good mechanic that if it was taken advantage of to a fullest extent now I mean I don't want to be using this as the best example but I mean it is a good example um, in F1 2018 and 2019 they have mm. quite a good um, set of questions and quite a good set of outcomes so I mean you feel like you're being thrown random questions that if you want to duck out of because they're difficult and you're not willing to risk upsetting one one part of your crew to beef up another part of your crew or you're not willing to upset your team to get onto another team there's plenty of reason for you to duck out and answer the questions but because it came at you so thick and fast you'd have more of a chance to answer and um, mm-hmm. it felt exciting and engaging really um, you know you kind of someone it's under, you're under pressure you're supposed to feel like when the press is at you if you say the wrong thing you're going to land in trouble and i feel like if you could preserve that a bit more in the in the fifa press conferences that would be good another example they could use is 2k games like nba 2k yeah they're always and really well wwe 2k like their backroom scenes and their interviews are always fantastic that that mm-hmm. that is that's pretty much the pinnacle of a sports interviews now and even at that they're quite limited in their scope because the amount of data and the sort of stuff they'd have to record the amount of um, processing and I guess the amount of resources that has to put into put to making a huge amount of them, but next generation, you know, we'll see. I did like the I do like what they've been doing with the two with the two K series. I thought they've been the best, apart from obviously the Formula One game, as you said. Well, the the so, Formula One, um, the cutscenes are quite. I wouldn't say they're perfect yet because they're they're quite wooden and they didn't seem to put enough effort into um what you call a uh, set dressing. They're kind of usually in the same two locations. And it doesn't seem as spontaneous as maybe it could be. Um, another thing to move on from the kind of the wooden cutscenes and the unnecessary nature of them in FIFA is um, people don't like the fact that there's not enough change in pro clubs and that foot is essentially 
despite all their good words about not fleecing people anymore, is the same the same fleece upon as usual. People feel like they're being taken for a ride just to get a competitive team. Now, I interviewed Matt Pryor, like from FIFA, maybe 14 months ago, in the lead-up to the release of FIFA 19, and he said that because other games in the FIFA series, he couldn't name them, obviously, he was talking about Battlefront, um, they got a, a bad reputation, and that like they felt the game was fair, and that people online, and to be fair to him, this is true, there are YouTubers who will have played many, many games and gotten these excellent team with Ronaldo and Messi and, you know, Black Ball, Pele and all this type of stuff. Um, but again, that's thousands upon thousands upon thousands of games. So as much as they can try and skirt around the criticism, the game does lend itself to paying money to get a good team. Everyone can get a four and a half star team within two, three hundred games. But to go five star, you're going to have to go get your wallet out or else play five thousand games. And nobody's going to play five thousand games of FIFA when it's it's pretty dreadful to play online. It's the scripting and the momentum shifts are wild, and it it is really tough to keep going. And I'm, I'm Even when they really say struggling. Not a thing. Exactly, they can deny it all they want, but it just it just feels like if they didn't do that, if they didn't like put you against someone way better than you and make it a bit fairer by handicapping them and you know buffing you, they wouldn't have people playing. You just give up because you know I hate saying this because it sounds elitist, but most people are pretty bad at video games. You know, like most people are kind of casuals who don't want to put in the hours to play to really get into it. They want to pick it up, have a few games win a few lose a few and leave if you don't cater to that crowd you're gonna decimate like your audience. Myself. that's it i mean I, what well, I, I don't want to be insulting but like you know not everyone's going to be kind of good enough to win every single game of fifa that they play so it's just well not everyone yeah. no not everyone's gonna be good enough to win most fifa games but they have to let some people who are kind of poo win a few and i suppose i can understand it from that mm-hmm. point of view but it doesn't make for a compelling game for those who are willing to try and win yeah, like, like even some I'm having a look here now somebody actually um made a reddit thread that he was updating a list of bugs and stuff that were in uh to do FIFA even some minor things like in the Champions League you're starting off at last year's squads instead of this year's squads in the interviews That'll again be, in the th- press some of that stuff will be fixed in the first patches like in like oh, yeah. two weeks things like but, that, have... but like a lot of people like some of the reviews are online are saying EA have released an unfinished game See, this is the thing. Every year, because of the size of the fucking player database and everything like that, what happens is, um, you know, the, like the deadline transfers, they're not done until, you know, the first patch. So when it gets the first update, like a week's time, two weeks' time tops, that's done, that's gone, and you'll be playing with the teams as they are starting the season. John, if I might just counter your counter with, ProWeb did take a lot of poop including a little bit of poop for myself, over the fact that they started their game with last year's squads and they had to update it about a day and a half after the game was released. So I think that mm. getting your squads in line for release day, sorry, not getting your squads in line for release day opens you up for criticism. And I think it is fair to point out that two weeks is a long time to wait. You know, FIFA is mm. supposed to be the official one. You know, you sacrifice good gameplay. You open yourself up to being fleeced online so you can play with all the current players with proper faces and proper jerseys and all that stuff is that not what you're paying your money for you know waiting two weeks valid waiting two weeks to have fundamental stuff like that fixed in the biggest franchise that will sell hundreds of millions of copies or whatever Mm -hmm. it it just seems like really lazy and if they could have if they should they should have delayed the game it's not finished well here just going back to what i was saying there about that reddit thread Vinny. um so it's on uh, fifa careers which is run by ea themselves um and after 27 fault updates it turns out that fifa or sorry not fifa but ea had shut down their forum in an attempt to silence the community and stop uh, responding to their comments and messages so i mean what does that say about how they're willing to deal with the situation like i know this kind of thing makes them look really bad they don't give a shit it's going to make them billions yeah yeah with silencing your audience you know it just says that something's wrong in the entire process of how the game is made. I mean, it, but this is EA. I mean, like even going back to like to like Battlefront Two when that came out, it was a complete and utter disaster. Like, does EA just have a very bad public relations like department? Maybe or I think their public relations department's very good. Is the problem? I mean, people tend to forget these things pretty quickly. They see, they tend to sense the mood. You know that they can't 
close the gate after, they can't bolt the gate after the horse is gone, but they can they can certainly put the fire out as quickly as humanly possible. They've gotten rid of that Reddit excuse me, that Reddit community, like you said. Um it's just this is the kind of thing that EA can afford to do. They have the resources, the money, the large PR teams to kind of handle this type of fire and they do it all the time. I mean, they're just gonna give out packs to people, they'll go on the charm offensive, they'll quote unquote fix the game and they'll offer people free stuff and they'll placate them long enough that people forget about it. And they'll sell FIFA twenty one and they'll still sell hundred copies to everyone that Pro Evo will sell. They'll they may have lost the Star Wars franchise, but they'll get another franchise that will you know, they'll ruin yeah. for want mm-hmm. of a better word. And life will go on. I mean, even their 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 share price dipped only a little bit after Battlefront two, but after their investors saw they were serious about milking their customers dry and then just saying sorry afterwards. I think EA's mantra of it's better to beg for forgiveness than ask for permission, it works for their investors. Their stock price is going to keep going up and up and up and up and up the more the customers hate their game and keep buying them. So power to them. They have some strange voodoo going on whereby they can Mm. fuck up so many times and watch their share dip a little bit and then go back higher than it was before they fucked up. Mental. As you said, it is the PR. And, like, you know what? It has traditionally been a very good game, but, like, I think this year is the year that might break the camel's back. You can kind of forgive them when they have all the license in and, as you said, get their squads right. But, like, this year they don't even have Juventus. They're Piedmont Calcio. Because do they, they have the players' names? They do have the players' names, but... They do have the, the players' whole, names. But like, if, if I might interrupt you here, John, I'm so sorry for hopping in. No, no, we're FIFA fine. sell themselves on the official experience. You go in, you see all the logos, you see all the sponsors, you see all the faces, you have every, little pictures of everyone, little pictures of the manager. Everything is just so. To lose out Christ on... The is perfect, the stadiums. Exactly. The fan experience, it's all about... Like, exactly. When you're playing Pez, you're playing in, you know, uh, the, the Ibrox Square, and it's a... You know, to be fair, a, Proev a, have Ibrox Stadium, but... Um, I'm, you know what it's, it's you know exactly what I mean. that it's having everything it's a hundred percent being ninety nine point nine percent is not good enough that that's not a that's not a selling point having more licenses than the other guy is not enough anymore they have all the licenses and that's gone and not only do they not have all the licenses the license they're missing is the one that happens to have the biggest player in the world and I know Messi's probably better podcast gets cancelled immediately but Ronaldo is a more saleable player like people people yeah. know who Ronaldo is who aren't into football. Whereas you kind of have to know about football to know who Messi is. Ronaldo kind of transcends the sport because of his humanitarian stuff. The fact that he looks like a Portuguese model and has like a really nice earring and all that looks crap. Looks like he is a... <laughs> okay, fine, whatever. I think but the word is, you're looking at for there was God, maybe. So if you, if you want to play as Ronaldo in the game, the biggest footballer on the planet, you're going to be playing in a fake jersey with a fake team. And that, that that's a big deal. Whether that's going to make a big deal to their big dent in their sales... I don't know, but it does certainly undermine that kind of feeling that the game is invincible and their licensing is invincible. And, the, and in the long term, I think that most. means something. And like, I, do you know what? I enjoyed the journey last year and the last couple of years because they've been building that story over two or three years. This year, they just dropped it. They didn't say now. Genuinely now, to be compelling. Honest, the journey was it, very good. It was. And they've changed this year with Volta, which is, you know, like the FIFA Street style game. FIFA Street style game in Volta is boring because it's not hard to do any of the tricks all you're doing is waggling a stick and kind of being really aggressive with your play and the ball ends up in the net it's yes. not go it's forward, not a satisfying game ass. you what go forward shake your ass take a go, shot score that, the goal that's it that's basically it it's it, it's not very satisfying i remember playing indoor fifa 98 i mean i'm that old i think FIFA 98 and i used to play the indoor mode and that was the exact same thing it's such a small area and the game is so imprecise and it doesn't really reward skill. It just rewards trying. The ball just ends up in the net if you just kind of bluster forward, hammer pass, waggle the stick, and eventually press shoot. So I think condensing the game into Volta almost exposes the limitations of the engine all the more. The idea is nice. The idea of like making little kind of themed teams. Did I say that correctly? I think I did. Themed yeah. teams to play off each other is kind of cool. And when you mix in all the legends and put them in the different arenas, again, it's cool. It's good to look at. It makes for lovely youtube but it's not good to play i played no, just and they took away the fun that was in fifa street you know like the, the the mad fireballs the that that the is wild. true that is true at least fifa street acknowledged the fact that it was dumb volta is just like hey take me seriously while it is pooping itself i, I don't know what else to describe it as 
it, it's not the right arena to show off the engine. It's literally the worst type of re arena in which to show off the engine because it exposes the limitations of it. Um, I'm going to give FIFA a little. I'm going to give FIFA a little bit of uh, praise before we wrap it up because we've, I think we've all agreed that PES is better. Um, but you know what? I like FIFA for it. Sit down on the couch and play with your mates. The amount of different game modes and stuff that's in the kickoff series is quite nice. You, know, you can play the Champions League finals. You can do the, you know, the man sent off game. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, all those little fun house games. They're, Absolutely. That, that makes the game. That's what makes the game for me. I think it's only fair to mention the fact that all the good things about FIFA 19 are still there and the kickoff modes in FIFA 19 was probably the best part of it I mean for you finishing up the journey was fantastic but for me going through all those modes playing headers and volleys playing that mad joke where you get someone sent off like every time someone scores a goal like those mad yeah. matches in South America you read out read about every once in a while where like 22 yeah. are sent off um, 7 versus 9 <laughs> that, that's it fantastic stuff that's brilliant I do I do like that very much Um the graphics this year are actually a little bit better. They've milked a bit more out of the Frostbite engine to make it just a little bit better looking. The jerseys don't contort and stretch all weird. So when someone's pulling your jersey, their number 10 now takes up like a whole square kilometre and the jerseys stretch back three metres. There's no more of that stuff going on. It's a bit more uh, restrained. Uh, it's mm -hmm. a good looking game. The tempo of the game is still a little bit quicker than I like, but it's also a bit closer to real football. Even though you're pinging the ball around like a mad joke and doing all these mad tricks at least the game feels like it's running at a mad speed for a, it's not running at a mad speed for all of its insane trickery elsewhere still not a great game though i would go well, for be seven and a half out of ten when i'm reviewing it but only because it's a lot of content um and i but, get i guess they'll have fixed it by the time i review it for the paper so well maybe give it about a month FIFA or not FIFA by the A will give him a chance to fix all the patches and all that, uh, the bugs. Uh, we might have a different game in a month. We might have a different opinion, but for at now. the moment, it's Pez. Yeah, Vinny, me, if you're on money, you're going Pez, aren't you? Definitely. If if I could only buy one, I'd definitely go for Proev. But the fact of the matter is that Proev wasn't really perfect either. Um, they made a huge deal about their cutscenes and their cutscenes again bring in a little bit more loading than I would really care for. And they don't have much of an impact in the game. In fact, there were only two or three cutscenes in an entire season. Bear in mind there will be a dozen during the season, if not slightly more, a dozen and a half, twenty. And only two or three of those will have any real effect. The one at the start of the season where you tell if it got you can say this guy's gonna play in the match or not, when your new signings the very start of the season, is he gonna play in your first game? Yeah. One that you say, I'm gonna finish in eighth, or I'm gonna finish in fourteenth, or I'm gonna qualify for the Champions League, that'll give you more money. And then there's one more, um, I think it's the press ask you about whether you're gonna play, you know, hard are you going to play fair are you going to play like attractive football and obviously the first few games they rate how you play and then your morale suffers the rest of the season is just like hey how are you not too bad and there's no effect <laughs> this is it's really it's weak and you end up just skipping them a lot of the time the thing is on the pitch they change so much and because it feels so fresh just to play in 90 minutes condensed into eight minutes um it, it, it's really worth playing any mode in the game that the ai has a lot of bloopers there are some boo-boos like whenever you pass the ball to someone and they miss it the next guy instead of it changing to him your cursor changing to him and him coming to control the ball they just kind of stand there and look at it before decide what to do and that does lead to some awkward uh, moments where the ai just looks like it's clapped out when you're playing against a computer on the highest moments you for hit my mic there um it can be cheap i'm playing on superstar at the moment because top player isn't hard enough and superstar you have these unstoppable goals Almost a little bit like FIFA, except for that it's just the AI decides, I'm going to score now to make it interesting because you're playing against a computer and you're too good, obviously. Take this. And you're like, I don't feel like I could have done anything to stop that. And that's not fair. It kind of ceases to be fair. So it needs to be tweaked. They need to make top player more difficult or make superstar more fair and have to get rid of the loose balls. Um, Master League, again, they've added some other stuff in, streamlined the menus. It's still as compelling as ever. Who else, you know... Who else loves going into the Master League with the defaults? I mean, John, do you, do you play with the default team in Master League? Dean, are you into that yourself? Uh, you don't play Pez, do you? No, I don't play Pez. To be honest, no. I don't play. I haven't played um, FIFA much in the past year or so, but it's another one. Now. I, I was actually going to get FIFA 20, but based on all of this, I don't think I will. I might actually give Pez a go this time. It's, it's going to be Pez. No, I go default, as, it, as, it said, as you said. I always go with the default Master League team. And again, this year I played three and a half four seasons but Nottingham Forest and it took them to the treble nice. 
with the default team from Division 2, well, the Championship, excuse me, um, I got my option file, like, even before the game was released, there was an option file that was based on the demo, because Konami, those clever foxes, Fox Engine and all that, they, um, yeah. they allowed you to mess around in the edit mode and transfer your edit mode data to your main game when it came out. So there was, like, the Championship, the Premier League, um, it was Serie A, and, no, no, Serie A is fully licensed, excuse me, and um, yeah. La Liga. So you could basically have all those teams made up using the Pez online jersey editor. It's, it's in one of the Pez database or some one of those websites. Make your own jersey. Someone already did that. So on the day it was launched or the day I got the review code, we had all the real jerseys in there. It was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, but three and a half seasons winning the Triple Forest, probably too quick. I don't know. It was on top player. I think Still it was fantastic really cool. work though. It, it it really was. Thank you. Uh, it was like, uh, I don't know, 98 games. I mean, just, I more or less didn't play a single other mode. I just went straight into Master just League. And just, just, I think it took six days of just playing it like more or less full full time. I kind of gave up on life and was like, well, I'm a full time pro ever now. This review is very important um, because I totally just did it for the review. I didn't do it because I love Master League. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, I think I gave it in the end, I gave it nine out of 10 uh, with the with the ultimate underlying that they have to fix the AI um, and maybe... Maybe make it a bit more difficult. And your last final thoughts on uh, FIFA rating was? Um, yeah, like I said, I would go for 7 or 7.5 because, I mean, there's still a lot of content there. They did try to change a lot. It doesn't work out and they will fix it when they patch it in two weeks. I did. You have to criticise them for not having the game ready in time. It wasn't finished. Simple as that. Um, it's not nearly as good as ProEv in a mechanical sense. Not as much fun to play, but there's more content. And I think that I think it would reflect that in a 7 or a 7.5 review. All this crack on Metacritic saying 1.3 is the average for the user score. Users are passionate about the game. There are people here who are giving it just zeros. There are reams of zeros. And they've given fair criticism. But criticism that kind of doesn't address the fact that the game is still mechanically fine. It's still a better pace than last year. Um, it's still a better looking game than last year. There's still more content than last year. Um to be fair to it, as much as we complained about it, it's still a 7 or a 7.5. And when I give a 7 or a 7.5, I, I mean it's just above average. I My rating system doesn't start at 5. I've gladly given games like 2 and 3 um, out of 10. So, uh, yeah, 7.7 7 is it's not good. It's average enough. I think that's a fantastic note to wrap this up on. Fantastic so, and oh. parched here, you know. So before we finish up, Vinny, where can our listeners find you if you want to read any other game reviews by yourself? He's my favourite game reviewer I've ever met. Do you want a, an old shameless plug there? Much. We're fine for ourselves. <laughs> shameless plug. Well, I would buy the Irish Sun every Saturday and Sunday and <laughs> work work your way somewhere between page 17 and 24. Um, I haven't been writing for EliteGamer.com for a while, but some of my older game reviews are on EliteGamer.com. I'm hoping to find a new place to write now soon enough because I'm doing a lot of freelance copywriting. But uh, I still have a bit of free time and I'd like to belt out the long-form reviews online. But for now, Irish Sun Print, every weekend, it's Ireland's brightest daily newspaper and all that stuff. So yeah, go on, read us. Awesome. And <laughs> Johnny, do I give us one uh, send us home? Okay. So yeah, well obviously the podcast you can find anywhere that you can get a podcast. So Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Acast. Yeah, keep reading them off because we're there. Um, social media, anywhere you can find Ghost and obviously the Ghost Daddy website where there's pretty much new content going up there on the daily at the moment. So, you know, be sound, follow us. And on that, good luck, good night, goodbye. Thanks. But what is And Vinny, you're a legend. But what is Goose? Thank you, you're a legend too. But what is Goosed? What is Goosing? When I've been Goosed, what's happened? You have just been teched. <laughs> You, you've just read a well-constructed tech review from Marty Meany or John Harrison. That's what to yeah. be goosed means. So yeah, the I Goosed podcast. That. I'm looking forward to listening to it, definitely. Sweet, sweet. Fantastic. Uh, with that, I think it's time to say good morning, good evening, good afternoon, Depending whatever time of day you're listening. listening really. <laughs> Pleasure being here. Thanks so much for having us, Dean. Cheers, Dean. Have a good one, man.